has done good things to you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, you know, if that was for me, it would be great, you know, because all I need is just a little pat of cake. That's all. But God, he's deserving of everything that we have, all our mind, body, and soul. He's been so good to us that we ought to be just delighted and ought to just show him just how good he has been to us. Amen. Amen. So come on now. I need you all to come on and get, get, help me. I need somebody to help me lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has been good. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. That's the God that we serve. The one true and living God. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. God, the, the, the Lion of Judah. God, our provider. He's our sustainer. He's our way maker. He's everything that we need at any time that we need him to be. And we ought to be thankful for it. Amen. Amen. How good God is. You know, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we ought to be rejoicing and glad in it. I shouldn't have to pump and prime you. Now, I gave you a remedy last Sunday, and you, ought to, you should have put it into practice this Sunday. Amen. So when you come through those doors, you should have been rejoicing already. You know, come on now. I need some help this morning. Amen. God is good, and all the time, Amen. We come to lift up Jesus this morning. We come to glorify him. We come to get out of his way and let him have his way. Amen. Father God, we thank you right now. We bless you and we just praise you. We give you all the glory and all the honor. We thank you for being such a good God, such a forgiving God, such a loving and kind, patient God. You are patient with us, God, because sometimes we get on, get on your nerves. I know it, but God, we thank you. We don't get what we deserve, God, but we get all of your kindness and all of your love, which is long-suffering, God. We thank you for Jesus this morning, God. We come this morning to praise you and glorify you and to lift up your name. God, we want you to have your way in this place, God. As our praises go up, God, we thank you that you get up off your throne and you come and see about your people this morning. Let your glory cloud fill this temple this day, God. Glorify yourself in this building, God. We thank you, Father. We just praise you. We give you all the glory, God. We come to invoke your presence this morning. We want to love on you as you love on us, God. We thank you, God. We praise you. We give you all the glory and all the honor. It is in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. navigating that ship today and the reason that we know he's navigating that ship today is because every wave that goes across he fights that wave he stands in it in the oceans though the oceans be just roaring we know that God has all power to tell it to be peace be still and with that peace being still we know that God is God he's God all by himself that's why I Willie Mae Everett will say I will trust God I will trust him for everything in my life. I will be obedient to his will and to his way because I'm in that ship and nothing will be lost. In other words, you're in the ship too. Nothing will be lost if you keep God in front. Praise God. Oh, I will trust him. Lord, I will trust you. you trust God for? I will trust you, oh Lord, I will trust you, I will trust you, oh yes, I will trust you, oh forever, 
living and breathing forever. Yes, Lord, I need you. Oh, yes, Lord, I, I need you for everything in my life. Do you need him? Lord, I need you. sisters in Christ. 
to our visitors, those of you that are visiting with us in-house this morning, and those that are visiting with us via social media on this Palm Sunday morning. On behalf of our pastor, in his absence, Pastor Brendan <coughs> Jones, and the entire Mount Calvary family, we extend to you heartfelt words of welcome to our Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church worship services here at here in we, the Church of Peace and Love in Pompano Beach, Florida. We have registered with us uh, Pastor John Dye, and he's from KGM Experience Church, I believe. If I made a mistake, please forgive me. Please stand, Pastor John Dye. Amen. <laughs> Are there other first-time visitors here this morning? Do we have any returning visitors? On behalf of Mount Calvary Baptist Church, to our visitors, we are delighted that you chose to worship with us on this Palm Sunday morning. We pray that you're going to be spiritually blessed as a result of the Word of God coming from Reverend Corey Machard on this Palm Sunday morning in a Palm Sunday message. We pray that you will get yourselves prepared to honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for what he did for us on Calvary. So again, we welcome you. And as I stand before you at this time, I'd like to take the opportunity to invite you to come back and worship with us again at any time. We'll be more than happy to have you. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. Announcements for Sunday, March 24th, 2024, to all parents, grandparents, and guardians. On next Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, there will be an Easter parade for all children ages 3 to 17. All participants must be at the church in the foyer by 10.45 a.m. The parade begins promptly at 11 o'clock a.m. On Saturday, March the 30th, Mount Calvary will partner with Keep On Pressing On Foundation to sponsor an Easter extravaganza here on our church grounds. Come out and bring your children and invite others to join us. There's going to be food, uh, egg hunt, all kinds of fun. So come out and let us all enjoy Jesus together. To all ministry chairpersons, there's a form on the table in the foyer for you to list the names of the events that you are going to sponsor this year. We need to put them on the calendar, the master calendar in the dining room. The church cler Christian Clergy Council will sponsor Passion Week starting Wednesday, this Wednesday, March the 27th through Friday, March the 29th. This blessed event will be held at Jesus Supernatural in Collier City. The time is 7.30 p.m., and that's the Passion Week uh, Revival. It's going to be a three-day event starting uh, Wednesday. Uh, Mount Calvary Baptist Church will host its first annual men's cook-off on Sunday, April 21st, immediately following the 11 o'clock a.m. worship service. Price per ticket, $15. One gentleman will take home the title of Mount Calvary's best male cook. Bring your appetite and join them for a day of delicious fun. That's, mm -hmm. that's going to take place in April. There are many activities that the city has sponsored. Uh, I, I won't read them, but I want you to know that they are uh, on the bulletin board in the foyer. So if you're interested in any of those activities, please um, check them out in the foyer. 
Now this announcement comes from the Fort Lauderdale Housing Authority. There's a waiting list that opened up on the 25th. We thought at first it was the 23rd, but it's the 25th, and it's gonna close out on March the 29th. You must go online if you want to participate in this, if you need to. Uh, there are, these flyers are also in the foyer, but you will get the website address. But it does close out on the uh, 29th. Do not call. They don't answer the phone in regards to that. Reminders, prayer meeting and in Bible study are held every Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Pastor Jones is the Bible study instructor, and if Pastor Jones is unable to teach, we have a very capable teacher, uh, Deacon Malcolm Roberts. Sunday school is held on Sunday uh, morning at 9.30 a.m. via Zoom and in-house. We'll be inviting you to come out to Sunday school and learn of God uh, we are studying faith. Remember, our sick and shut-in members as well as our bereaved members send a card or simply make a phone call just to let them know that they're being thought of. All volunteers for the Feeding South Florida Food Program are asked to please be at the church on Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock a.m. Thought for today. Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne of heaven with nail marks in his hands and feet. This represents his love for you, you, and you. At this time, Brianna, you have an acknowledgement for March um, Women's History Month. Brianna, yes. Have a wonderful day in Jesus Christ today. Celebrating, celebrating Women's History honoring young adult entrepreneurs. Our first feature is Sister Brittany Phillips. She is CEO of Bernard's Heart, dedicated to serving the community of Broward County through prayer, K through five tutoring, clothing bank, feeding the homeless and providing grocery to the elderly. Our second feature are co-owners of Potatoes of Steel. Brother Lindsay and Sister Chantel Steele are dedicated to serving the community through delicious hot quality meals with a professional touch. Mm -hmm. The third young adult featured is R and R. The CEO is Rebecca McNeil. She customizes apparel and accessories to positively promote African American culture with quality at its finest. There are no limits when it comes to Rebecca's skill. Our fourth feature is CEO of Photos by Charisse, our very own Antoinette Christian. She volunteers her photography skills during the year of 2023 to support various events at Mount Calvary Baptist Church of Pompano. Our final feature is a mother and daughter duo, the co-owners of Local Love, Melissa and Janae Banner support graduates with a start for essentials to begin college or transition into their careers. They aim to change the lives of one person at a time through the butterfly effect, loving locally through service of feeding, clothing, and sharing times, talent, and goods to adults as well as children throughout the entire year, day by day, week by week. Let's give it up and salute and congratulate our amazing young adult products, some of Mount Calvary Baptist Church finest. Well, it is that time to tell somebody you, that you're glad that they're here this morning. It's fellowship time. So we can get up and tell somebody, go, go let's, let's love on somebody. Shake their hand and tell them that you're glad that they're here this morning.
Well, it is that time of the service where we can all participate. It is giving time. Amen. So I, oh, I got one happy person. <laughs> she ready to give her money. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Get excited. Get excited. Amen. You know, this is the, uh, the start of Holy Week. Uh, we call Passion Week. Some call it Holy Week. Where this is the beginning where Jesus would give his life for each and every one of us. So today, as you give, think about that. As you, as you start your week, start your, you should have already started your day thinking about how good God has been to each and every one of us. He gave us his only son, his own, one and only son that he gave. Jesus, today was the day where they would throw out the palms and holler, Hosanna, Hosanna. You know, the beginning, the king was being entered in. So we want to usher in the king this morning. And right now, we're going to do that with our giving. Father God, we thank you. We just give you praise and glory and honor. And thank you, God, for this opportunity to give unto you. God, we understand that we are giving it to the church, but we're giving it to you. We pray that it will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, God. We pray that you will multiply it 104 times. And we just ask, praise you and thank you that you will bless it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. It is now in the hands of the ushers and the choir. Thank you. 
praise of worship should be on one accord. Amen. Well, it is that time of the service where you can cast all of your cares upon the Lord. Why? Because he cares for you. And there's nothing too hard for God. It might get hard for us, but it's not too hard for God. There's nothing too small and nothing too big that he can't handle. So if you like, you may come to the altar or you may stand at your seat. But if we want to cast all of our cares upon the Lord this morning, amen. The Bible says, was to come unto him, all ye that are heavy laden, and he will give you rest. And so whatever you're going through, God will give you rest for it. Rest for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter what it is, it can be sickness. It can be a struggle that you have. It can be your finances. It doesn't matter. God can do it. We just have to trust him and keep our faith. Even though it might not be happening when we want it or why we, how we want it, it will happen. We only believe. Only believe. Father God, we thank you right now. We bless your holy name, God. We thank you, God, for all that you do for each and every one of us, God. God, we come right now, God, to lay all of our cares upon you. Everything that is, has us weighted down, a burden down, God, a word about God, we come to cast all of it upon you, knowing that you would take care of each and every one of us, God. The hand that I hold, I might not know what they're going through, but God, I thank you that you're going to supply every one of their needs, God. You said if we just ask in your name, ask the Father in your name, that it would be granted unto us. So God, this morning we're asking in Jesus Christ's name to grant every need, God, to meet every need, God. We ask that you would deliver us from whatever situation we may be in, God. To heal our bodies right now, God, from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet this morning, God. We ask that you would bless our finances, God, that we would have more than enough in the storehouse this morning, God. Thank you, God. We thank you, Father. We come against every attack of the enemy this morning, God, and we will push him back to the pits of hell, knowing that he has no power over us, to God, and that you have put him under our feet this morning, God. So we travel on the head of the enemy this morning, God. And we bless you and we thank you, God, for everything that you're doing for us, God. There's nothing too big that you cannot handle, God. So, God, we place it in your hands this morning, God, knowing that you shall deliver. Deliver us from evil this morning, God. Thank you, God. Oh, God, we bless you. We praise you in advance for everything that you're doing for us right now, God. Oh, God, we glorify your name, God. There's no name that is named greater than yours, God. And you said in Ephesians, God, that you will handle everything that is named in this world and in the world to come. So, God, we know that there's nothing that you can't handle because you already know what's going to happen. So we stand firm on our faith this morning, God, and we put our trust in you. We put our trust in Christ Jesus, knowing that when we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, that it shall be granted unto us. So God, don't hold back any good thing from us. We thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. We God, we ask that you continue to bless this service as we go through. Anoint the one that you have placed here to preach this morning, God. That we will hear a word from heaven this morning, God. Move each and every one of us out of the way. Holy Spirit, you get in the way. Have your way this morning, God. Thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We give you praise and glory. It is in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. As you go back to your seat, thank the Lord. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Scripture will come from Psalms 124. Psalms 124. Hallelujah. God is so good. 
when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 124. When you find a stand to your seat, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. And I will be reading from the King James Version. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, wow. now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, yes. then they had swallowed us up yes, yes. quick. When the wrath was kindled against us, yeah, then the waters had overwhelmed us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stream had gone over our soul. Yeah. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Yes. Blessed be the Lord, be yeah. who have not given us a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. Yes, yes. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Yes, yes. Our help is in the name of the Lord yes, who made heaven and earth. Well, Lord. The Lord bless the readers and the hearers yeah. and the most assuredly the doers of his word. It is now in the hands of the choir.
Because their voices have been hushed by the chilly hand of death, but God, we pause a moment to say thank you. Thank you, kind sir, for counting it not robbery to continue to sow the victory threads of our lives and allowing our moments to roll on a few days longer. God, thank you. Thank you, God, for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Father, thank you for things being as well as they are. God, we even say thank you for things being as worse as they are because God if we don't realize anything else we realize and understand that you are the author and the finisher of our faith and Father for that we tell you thank you God it's in you we live it's in you we move it's in you we have our very being and God for that type of access we tell you thank you now God it's Corey one more time standing God behind a desk in which I've stood before so my prayer is God that you put your mind in my mouth I'm your instrument father and I give you the permission to play me in any key that you see fit and my prayer this morning is that of David's and that is father let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart God let it be acceptable in your sight Oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. It's in the holy, majestic, 
holy, majestic, and loving name of Jesus the Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Good morning, Mount Calvary. For this is indeed the day that the Lord has made, and my resolve is, in spite of everything that's going on in the earth, my resolve is that I will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. I'm like David this morning. I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let's go into the house of the Lord. Any glad folks in the building this morning? Amen. I know y'all checking me out, and the reality is I'm checking y'all out too. Amen. Amen. We're just going to check each other out together. Amen. But we're going to get through the word of the Lord. Amen. Would you help me celebrate my best friend, your pastor? Amen. In the person of Pastor Brandon Jones. Amen. Uh, come on, Mount Calvary. It's a poor frog that won't praise his own pond. I said, can you help me celebrate your pastor? Amen. Pastor Brandon Jones. Amen. And I can call him Brandon Jones Sr. because he has a baby boy now and they just had a six child. Amen. Praise God of the Bible. Amen. I asked him, I said, Reverend, are you done? Are you going for completion? He said, no, I'm done. Amen. So praise God. Amen. To these lovely deacons, to the mothers, to you, you and you that makes up the household of faith. I honor you on this morning and to the woman who gives my heart another reason to be. Amen. Could y'all help me thank God for the finest woman in the room and the person of my wife, Sister Denisha Marchand. Amen. My wife and my children are here. Amen. We certainly bring you greetings from the Delray Community Baptist Church, the Baptist Church with the Pentecostal experience where my pastor is Bishop Albert Moore. Amen. Amen. Go with me to the gospel according to St. Luke. When you have it, I believe it is the custom of this house to stand for the reading of God's word. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. Amen. And while you're finding it, the Lord allowed me about a year and a half, maybe two years ago now, to put pen to paper and write a book entitled The Struggle is Real, Young Preacher's Edition, Eight Tools Needed for Successful Ministry. And I have a few copies of the book with me today. And... Uh, Pastors all over the country were purchasing the book. They were reading it, and they said, this is a learning tool. This is something that uh, we need uh, to teach with. And so we put a workbook with the book. Amen. And so I have both available today. Uh, they're both available on Amazon, but together on Amazon, they're $40. But if you get them with me today, it's $35. Amen. Amen. The Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter and the 33rd verse. Uh, the Bible reads as thus, it says, And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him in the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right and one on the left. I want to talk for briefly from this subject, the place called Calvary place called Calvary. You can take your seats in the presence of the Lord. As we take a few seconds and look back over our lives, we all can say that there have been some places where we've wanted to go or we looked forward to going. Whether it was that vacation to Disney that vacation to Times Square in New York, a tour of the White House, or wherever your dream vacation may have been or will be, the point this morning is we all have desired places where we've wanted to go. 
Some of us here today have desired places we would like our education to be. We have desired places we would like our finances to be. We have desired places we would like our marriages to be. We all have places in life where we would like to be. Believers of God, as we study the scriptures, we find the Bible is loaded with very significant places. Uh, the Bible is loaded with very significant places. One of the places uh, that we see in scripture is Mount Ariat. Uh, you know, we've heard of these church names, Mount Ariat, Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, you know, Mount Ariat was the place where the ark landed when the flood was over. And then we hear of a place called Mount Moriah. Uh, we've heard it, Mount Moriah, Missionary Baptist Church. And, and some of us think that these names just come out of nowhere. Or these names are just made up. But these names are really in the Bible. Mount Moriah is the place where Abraham offered his son Isaac as a sacrifice. We learn about in scripture Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai, believes of God, is the place where Moses received the written law. We learn about a place by the name of Mount Pisgah. Mount Pisgah, believes of God, is the place where God showed Moses the promised land. We hear about places like Mount Nebo. Mount Nebo is the place where God burned, buried Moses, and then turned around and buried his grave. We hear about places like Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel is the place where Elijah challenges the God that answers by fire. We hear believers of God places like Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the place where God shows David that he is a strong tower in the time of trouble. We hear about places like Mount Olive. Mount, Mount Olive, believers of God, is the place where Jesus would go and rest after performing ministry, after preaching and doing, doing miracles and the work of ministry all night long. We hear of places like Mount Hermon, believers of God. Mount Hermon is the place where Jesus was transfigured, the place where Jesus' divinity outshined his humanity. And while all of these places are significant, while all of these places are great, there is a place, believes of God, that supersedes them all. There's a place, oh my God, that is greater than them all. There is a place that is more significant than them all. And it is a place called Mount Calvary. Believes of God, it's no happenstance that I happen to be at the Mount Calvary Baptist Church this morning. And, and, and so let me give you a little history about your name uh, 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 so you know why this church is called Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Calvary, believes of God, was the place, oh my God, God the Father had planned long before the foundations of the earth. We see it in Revelations, the 13th chapter and 8th verse. It says, and I and all that dwelled upon the earth shall worship him, him whose name are not written in the book of the Lamb slain from the foundations of the earth. Calvary, believes of God, was not only a place where God the Father had planned, but Calvary, believes of God, was a place of prophecy, a place uh, that was spoke of long before it ever came into existence. We see in Genesis, the third chapter, in the 15th verse, the Bible says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Oh my God, the, 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 the beginning of time in Genesis, the third chapter, and 15th verse, is telling us or painting the picture of what will happen at Calvary. Calvary is a place of prophecy, oh my God, because of Isaiah, Isaiah 53 and 5. We, 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 we quote this, we, we, we quote this mother, we, 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 we quote it and, and we don't really understand that, that, that we, we, we are quoting the prophecy of 
Calvary. Isaiah 53 and 5 says, and he was wounded, oh my God, for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Oh my God, this, this, is, this, this is significant because, oh my God, we, we, we're being told he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. Talking about the scene of Calvary in the book of Isaiah, but Jesus isn't even born unto the book of Matthew. And so Calvary is a place of prophecy. Not only believers of God is Calvary a place of a place that God the Father planned or before the foundations of the earth. Not only is Calvary a place of prophecy, believers of God, but Calvary was a place that Jesus preached about long before the call from God to go. Luke's gospel, the same, 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 same gospel that we took our text from, the second chapter in the 49th verse says, And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Oh my God, didn't you realize, oh my God, mother and Joseph, that I must be about my father? father's business when Jesus oh my God is telling his mother and his earthly father that he must be about his oh my God father's business Jesus understood that my assignment on earth is temporary but there's a greater assignment that I must fulfill and so I don't have time oh my God to mix words I don't have time to mix emotions the only thing I have time to do is be about my father's oh my god my father's business and so Jesus preaches about Calvary long before oh my god his call from God to go there we see it in John's gospel the third chapter and the 14th verse and the Bible says and as Moses lifted up a serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up this is Jesus oh my god telling and instructing the people Oh my God, that there's going to come a day, oh my God, where you're going to have to lift the Son of Man up. And then John 12 and 32 says, and if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men, oh my God, unto me. Oh my God, so we see it, oh my God, here that Jesus is preaching about Calvary long before he gets a call from his father to go. It's proven again in Matthew 16 and 21 when Jesus says from that time forth Jesus oh my God began to show his unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day oh my God that's a shout there be raised again and believes of God what I love about what I love about this thing what the wonderful thing is before you can ever get to destiny you must go through something called process oh my god I'll say it again before you can get to destiny you must go through something called process so so why don't you indulge me for a moment for the first time in my sermon why don't you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor tell him say endure the process Oh my God, that was the wrong neighbor. Find you another neighbor and tell that neighbor, tell him, say, I know the process is hard. Oh my God, tell him, say, I know the process is rough. But tell another neighbor, tell him, say, endure the process. Oh my God, so it's here at the point of our text that we find Jesus at Calvary. But before Jesus gets to Calvary, Jesus finds himself in the Garden of Gethsemane. He finds himself in the Garden of Gethsemane and he finds himself being betrayed by one of his boys oh my god yes Judas told oh my god oh my god Judas told the popo that the man that I kiss that is the man that you're going to take into custody oh yeah Jesus oh my god is then kissed by Judas and taken into custody 
visiting. Oh my God, but before Jesus is kissed by Judas, before he is taken into custody, Jesus finds himself having a talk with his father. Jesus finds himself having a talk with his father that goes a little like this. He says, Daddy, this cup is bitter. Oh my God, I don't know if I can bear this cup. Oh my God, this cup is heavy. This cup is painful. And God, if you can, let this bitter cup, oh my God, pass by me. And I believe I'm preaching to some folks under the sound of my voice that the vicissitudes of life and the calamities of life have caused you to pray that prayer that Jesus prayed. Father, let this bitter cup, oh my God, pass by me. I've had to cry myself to sleep. Father, let this bitter cup, oh my God, pass by me. I, oh my God, had to lose some loved ones. Father, let this bitter cup, oh my God, pass by me. I got more money. I got more bill than money. Father, let this bitter cup passed by me and so we see Jesus in his human form because we all know that Jesus is 100% man and 100% God so it is here that we find Jesus having what I like to call a human moment oh my God he oh my God is 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 feeling oh my God the turbulence he's feeling the pain he's feeling the anguish he's feeling the agony of his assignment and he's praying that this is too heavy that I need this cup oh my God to pass over me and so Jesus because he's 100% man and because he is 100% God he then taps into his divinity and he says nevertheless not my will but thy will be done and Jesus the Bible says he begins while he's praying this prayer he's crying tears drops of blood because of the anguish of the assignment he's crying tear drops of blood because of the pain of the assignment and I just got a question aren't you glad oh my God that he oh my God did not give up in Gethsemane oh my God but the story continues that he was taken into custody and when he was taken into custody the Bible says that oh my God they did not they did not believe of God they did not, oh my God, really understand why he was in custody. They, they didn't understand why he was in custody because on Palm Sunday, oh I forgot, it is Palm Sunday today. Oh my God, they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Oh my God, blessed be the name of our God. Oh my God, they was praising him for his sovereignty. They was giving him thanks for his superiority. They, 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 they was blessing his name because of the miracles that, oh Oh my God, he performed. But a week later, hey, a week later, oh my God, they come and the same folks, oh my God, they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord, are now saying, crucify him. And believers of God, could I park and parenthetically say, every time we make a choice to live contrary to the word of God, that we are crucifying him afresh, oh my God, daily. Every time we choose a hotel slip, every time we choose a midnight tip, finger hop, and hotel hop, we are making a decision oh my god that we are going to crucify him of flesh every time we're fighting against each other every time we're fighting against our loved ones we're crucifying him of flesh and could I suggest to you I know I'm in a Baptist church my membership is at a Baptist church oh my god but could I suggest that holiness is still right I know it ain't preached oh my god often I know it ain't popular oh my god but I got the audacity to remind Mount Calvary that holiness without no man oh my God shall see the Lord oh my God so the second time in my sermon why don't you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor tell him say you got to live holy uh, yes thank you brother musician I'm going to get there at the while oh my God you got to live holy you got to live right if you want to see Jesus then you got to live holy oh my God and living holy is not optional but living holy in order to see Christ is a requirement and 
when we make the decision that we're not going to live holy, we then make the decision to crucify him afresh. And so, same folks that said, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord. The same folks that come to church on Sunday and put on, oh my God, their nice church clothes. Oh my God, they, 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 they put on their clergy collar. They, 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 they put on their nice suit and tie. They put on their nice hat. Oh my God, and they fail to live the life, oh my God, that they preach and teach about on Sunday morning. Oh my God, they're making the decision to say, crucify him. We say on last Sunday or this Sunday, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But our response changes just seven days later. And so, so, so the lay out, crucify him, crucify him. And the Bible says that, that Pilate says, I don't have just cause to prosecute this man. And his wife comes to him and says, you, my friend, need to, oh, my God, rid yourself of this situation. Thank God for a wife with sense. Oh, brothers, I was expecting y'all to clap your hands and give God praise. I said, thank God for a wife with good sense. My sisters. If your husband didn't clap, don't beat him up after the service, please. So his wife says, rid yourself with this. And what she then does, what he, she sends word to him to rid himself of this. And then uh, he gets the word, hey, Pilate, your wife says, this is, this is something you want to, uh, you don't want this blood on your hand. And so Jesus, Pilate says, all right, I wash my hands of this. They led him from judgment hall. And, and, and they says uh, in one judgment hall, they said, well, uh, Jesus, would you take the stand? Jesus said, yeah, I'm going to take the stand. Uh, I, I'll take the stand. Well, Jesus, have you ever killed someone? Jesus said, no, I'm innocent of that charge. Jesus said, well, have you ever robbed someone? Jesus said, no, I'm innocent of that charge. Jesus, have you ever not loved someone unconditionally? Jesus said, no, I'm, I'm innocent of that charge. And then the Bible says they took him to another judgment hall. And when he got to that judgment hall, oh, oh my God, they tried to list all of the things that they, 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 they listed in the, other, in the other judgment hall. And when they got to this judgment hall, they said, hey, Jesus, are you guilty of giving sight to the blind? Jesus said, yeah, I'm guilty of giving sight to the blind. Bible says that they said, Jesus, are you guilty of raising the dead? Jesus said, yeah, I'm guilty of raising the dead. Gee, they asked Jesus, they said, Jesus, uh, are you guilty of going to a wedding and turning water into wine? Jesus said, yeah, I'm guilty of going to a wedding and, and turning water into wine. They said, Jesus, are you guilty? Uh -huh. Oh, my God, of healing. Oh, my God, the lame man causing him to walk. Jesus said, yes. Oh, my God, I'm guilty of that. Then they went to the other judgment hall and said, oh, my God, Jesus, are you guilty of saving Corey Marcel? He said, yes. Yeah, I'm guilty. Oh, my God, of that. He says, oh, my God. They said, Jesus, are you guilty? Oh, my God, of, oh, my God, of coming down to see about Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Oh, my God, and popping a 
how Jesus said, yes, I'm guilty of that. And so they said, unfortunately, Jesus, oh my God, we have to charge you guilty. Oh my God, is charged. And so, oh my God, one Friday, y'all know what they did. They let him up go gather's him. Oh my God, they whipped him all night long. Oh my God, they whipped him to gums of flesh. Oh my God, came out of his body. Oh my God, in every one of his stripes, Isaiah told us that he was wounded for our transgressions. So every time he was beaten, he saw cancer. Every time he was whipped, he saw diabetes. Every time he was whipped, he saw high blood pressure. Every time he was whipped, oh my God, he saw asthma. Every time, oh my God, he was whipped, he saw COVID-19. And he was wounded. Oh my God, for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes. Oh my God, the Bible says that we are healed. And I got to get out of here now, Mount Calvary. Thank you so much. Oh my God, for letting me come. But the story goes on and they said, Oh my God, they whipped him all night long. They let him up go Gathers Hill. Y'all know what happened. Oh my God, when they got to the top of Mount, God, Mount uh, oh my God, go Gather. It was then called Mount Calvary. Y'all don't know what happened at Mount Calvary let me tell you we're at Mount Calvary now oh my god they hung him high they stretched him wide the Bible says that he said seven things and the first thing he said when he was on the cross he is father forgive them because they don't know what they're doing to me oh my god and I'm so glad that he prayed that prayer he says father forgive Corey father forgive Mount Calvary because they don't know what they're doing and then he stopped death oh my God to perform ministry one more time he looked at the man oh my God on side of him and says oh my God you ain't got to worry because today you're going to be with me you're going to be with me in paradise the Bible says that he stopped death oh my God to remember his mother and he told the disciple he said John, what I want you to do is remember my mama. And he told Mary, he says, take John in as your son. The Bible says that while Jesus was on the cross, he, 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 he had another human moment. And he says, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? It seems as if the growing is tough. It seems as if the road is tough. Oh my God. And so Jesus is now having another human moment while he's on the cross. And he says, my God, my God, why has thou why has thou forsaken me and then he goes on after that to say you know what I need a drink he says I thirst and aren't you glad that Jesus said if you drink of me you'll never thirst again and the Bible says it goes on to say oh my God it is finished he said on Calvary's cross notice he said it is finished Finish. and he did not say I am finished in other words he was trying to encourage us to let us know that the assignment here on earth oh my God is complete but I'm not through oh my God blessing you I'm not through opening up the windows of heaven and pouring you out a blessing that you would not have room enough to receive I am not through bringing the family together I am not through Oh my God, breaking generational curses. I'm not through. Oh my God. And then after that, he says, apparently my life has been in the wrong hands all this time. And then he says, into thy hands, God, I commend my spirit. Good night, Mount Calvary. I got to get out of here. I live in Port St. Lucie, so I got a ways to go. But I stood today to tell you that one Friday on a hill called Calvary he died
died. Yes, he died. I said he died, Job, until the sun refused, refused to shine. He died, Job, until the earth began to reel and rock, just like a drunken man. He died. Yes, he died, until the centurion soldier said, surely, this must be the Son of God. He died, Job. I said he died until the veil of the temple was red in twine. He died, Joel, until the moon began to cry teardrops of blood. He died, Calvary, until the sun, the sun refused to shine. But tell your neighbor, tell him for me, that's not how the story in three days later he rose again and I got to get out of here I got to close but because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all my fear is gone and I know that life is worth living just just because he lives living he loved me and he saved me buried he carried my sins far away but rising he justified and he freed me church he freed me church he freed me forever one day it might be today one day it might be tomorrow but one day he's coming back he's coming back he's coming back he's coming back coming back he's coming back he's coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle I got to leave you I got to close but I know you've seen the lightning flashing I know you've heard the thunder roar I know you felt sin breakers dashing trying to conquer your soul but I stood in Mount Calvary back the church to tell you that a weeping in me <laughs> endure for a night but joy joy unspeakable it comes in the morning the place called Calvary it's a place God the Father planned long before the foundations of the earth. It's a place of prophecy. But then it's a place that Jesus preached about. Long before his call from his earthly father, his, his heavenly father to go. Mount Calvary the Bible says uh, that he had the option or the choice to, to call on not a angel but he had the choice to give up in the middle of his process and call on a legion of angels to rescue him off that cross Mount Calvary, I got a question. Aren't you glad that he endured the process? It was, it was painful, mother. It was embarrassing. But he stayed there for you. He stayed there for you. He stayed there for you. He stayed there for me. There's some folks under the sound of my voice, you're contemplating whether I should give up or, or, or whether I should throw in the towel. No, 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 no. Somebody is depending on your yes to God. I'll say it again. Somebody is depending on your yes to God. Somebody, oh my God, oh my God, life is on life support. And although you're at the edge, oh my God, of giving up, although you're at the edge of throwing in the towel, you can't do it. Because if you do it, somebody else's life will end. 
What am I trying to say? All I'm trying to say is hang on in there. I know it's rough. Senator, I know it's tough. But but hang on. Hang on in there. And, and, and while you're hanging, make sure you grab a hold of his hand. Oh, yeah, yeah. The hymn Hold to his hand. Yeah, God's unchanging hand. Him, I was just say, you can build your hopes on things eternal, but hold to God's unchanging hand. When your earthly friends forsake you, and to God you have been true, there's a ready home in glory waiting for you. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Tell your neighbor, tell him, say, it's going to get better. Or tell another neighbor, say, it's going to be all right. I know you've been crying. I, 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 I know, I know, I, I know it's been rough. I know it's been tough. But hang on in there. Hang on in there because, oh my God, God is literally about to come to your rescue. Well, there's nothing good that happened about Calvary. I would argue with you. He now sits at the right hand of his father. Reverend Davis, he's making intercession for you and I. So, 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 so when we, we, we begin to say things like, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. That, that there's no other help I know if thou withdraw that self from me whether shall I go we got Jesus saying God daddy don't you see him don't you see him struggling don't you see him down there we, we, we got to do something about this oh, 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 or, or better yet every time you and I see it and God gets tired of us Gets tired and sick of us sinning because he done told us time and time again what to do and how to do it and the right thing to do. Reality is we all know right from wrong. When he's ready to destroy the earth, when he's ready to send a flood, when he's ready, oh my God, to send judgment, Jesus is there saying, Daddy, don't do it. Look, look, look at the nails in my hand. don't do it look at, at, at the rivets in my feet daddy don't do it they pierced me in the side I took care of that at Calvary aren't you glad I said aren't you glad I said aren't you glad that he paid a debt he did not owe and you and I owed a debt that we could not pay Christ Jesus came and he took our sins away. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. You can come by letter. You can come. We're standing. You, 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 you can come for Christian experience. Or you can come as a candidate of baptism. You come by letter. Which means you properly left one church and you want to join Mount Calvary. We, we, we don't want no drama over here. But then you can come from Christian experience. You say, oh, brother preacher, I want to give God my life and you my hand. You can come. But then the real preacher is going to be here next week. And he's going to remind you that he died and he got up. But then the real preacher's going to take you to the water. And when you get in, you're dirty. But after you come back up, oh my God, you're going to clean all over again. Would that be one? Would that be one? 
Now, Calvary, help me do ministry. Ask your neighbor. Tell, ask him. Say, are you saved? Wait for an answer. And if their answer is anything but yes, grab the hand and bring them down. Oh, come on. I'm licensing everybody to preach now. It's temporary. It's going to expire at the end of service. Amen. Amen. Will there be one? But we thank God for a saved house. Father, thank you so much. Thank you, God, for your love and kindness. David defines your love and kindness as better than life itself. Father, thank you. That one Friday you died. <clears throat> But early one Sunday morning, you got up and you declared that you got all power in your hand. Which then suggests to me, Father, that nothing is too hard for you. And so, Father, we thank you. Thank you for being a good God. Thank you for being a merciful God. Thank you for being a gracious God. Thank you for being a God that looks beyond our faults and see our needs thank you father now God I pray God that the word that was spoken today will encourage somebody God to run on and see what the end is going to be God I pray God that you let these folks know that in spite of everything that's going around in their life that's going on in their life all the noises that's that's happening in their life God, help them to know, realize, and understand that no weapon that is formed against them shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against them in judgment, Father, you already condemned it. So, Father, thank you because your word tells us in spite of life's vicissitudes, in spite of life's calamities, your word tells us that we're more than conquerors. So, Father, thank you for your word. And my prayer is, God, that you manifest your word in our lives this week. Cause this week to be the greatest week of our entire existence. I pray, God, that this week, that, God, we will receive a, a life-changing, oh, my God, phone call for the good. I pray that this week, God, we receive a life-changing email for the good. I pray that this week, today will be the first day of the best days of our entire existence. Because old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. So God, we give your name praise. We give you glory and honor and thanksgiving. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. <clears throat> Mount Calvary, God bless you. God keep you. And heaven smile upon you is our prayer. Let's receive the benediction. Now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, let it rest, let it rule, and let it abide with us now and forevermore. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen, amen, amen and amen. Mount Calvary, I got books, and I don't want to take none home. So y'all come and get these books from me. Amen? Amen. amen.